Hello, hello, hello. I would like to welcome everyone to the 26th episode of Money Trees. I'm your host, Khufu. Today I'm joined by an artist making waves across multiple blockchains. They're a talented musician, creator, an all-around dope human based out of Atlanta. Jamie Cornelia is here planting trees. How are you feeling today, Jamie? Uh, pretty good. How about you? Oh man, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. It's like 50 degrees here in New York. Can't complain with that type of weather in February. <laughs> oh man, it's kind. It's, it's cold out here too, though. Oh uh, yeah. Well, it's been like 15, so I'll take 50. Oh. <laughs> so um. Yo, you know, before we get started, it's been it's been a kind of loaded week in the space, to say the least. The show's about you, so I don't want to focus too much on it. Um, before I jump into questions, if there's anything you want to get off your chest related to the state of Web3, please do. I know that from all the times I've been in spaces with you, uh, just love your take, love your approach. Um, clearly, we've all been affected in one way or another by it. We can either skip over it, but if you did want to address anything... The floor is yours. Okay. Um, I know it's a lot going on and uh and with FIBA, there's a lot of uh, a lot that we don't like, but it's a lot of cool stuff going on too. And I feel like uh we as a community should spend I mean, obviously acknowledge elephants in the room and issues we have, but um I feel like we should spend more of our energy uplifting people and things that are doing the things that we align with. Um because, you know, it's 2022. A lot of people do a lot of things they know they're not supposed to do for the sake of outrage and, and clout, to be honest. So it would be energy well spent to elevate people and things that we love and protect in our energy from things that we don't. There it is. And so speaking on things that I love, like I, I love my experience that I've had with you. You know, I remember when I first dove into music NFTs, your name was consistently thrown around and shared as one to watch. And it was wild seeing that level of consistency from people that I didn't even realize knew each other. And I'm like, oh, shit. OK, OK. Like, let's see what's happening here. I checked your page and I realized why. Like the timbre of your voice, effortless, uh, effortless, effortless flows. And you have a crazy unique look like that's a recipe for attraction. Uh, what got you started as an artist? Um, I was in a, well, I was in like, I was, I have one of those like church stories, you know what I'm saying? So like I, I, my family owns a church in North Carolina and, um, I played the piano and did the choir and did the praise and worship team and stuff like that when I was little. So, um. I was always like on that side of my family, I was always, you know, in music somehow. And then my great, no, not my great, my grandfather was actually a, a DJ in the seventies. And uh, he used to watch me. My mom had me pretty young. So he used to watch me while my mom was in school. And uh, we used to have this game, like me and my, uh, me and my granddaddy where he would, I mean, I didn't know he was smoking weed at the time. I just knew he was, <laughs> I knew he was just fun, but he would hang out with me and have me pick out any random album that was in his collection and just play it. And we just dance around the living room and like act like we were performing it and stuff like that. So like my granddaddy, my granddaddy to this day feels like he is where I get all of my musical inspiration from. <laughs> Because we used to just pick out random albums. And that's when I was like like four, like three, four, five, like well into like seven or eight before I moved to Georgia. And, but um, and when I when I moved to Atlanta, like everybody was, you know, either in a dance group, either you had a dance group and you was going to these team parties and you was like dancing or if you weren't athletic, that is, or you were uh or you were like in a rap group of some sort, or if you weren't weren't in a rap, then you were in a punk band of some sort. And I was in a punk band in high school. I was also in the actual band, but I was in a, a punk band in high school like when I was 14. And then um, I was really into that. And uh, we were into like Rage, Rage Against the Machine. And like, I was really into gym class heroes and like Paramore and stuff like that. So, um, then 
uh, I met my I met like somebody who I consider my brother, like my best friend, my like my my senior year of high school, going into college, and he lived up the street from me. Uh, we used to like we used to skate with the same people. Um, my homie, uh, Grandmaster Wave, and uh, he had a rap group named uh, Visibly in Flight, and uh, around at the same time, I met Wino Willie on the internet. He was sending me beats and stuff. And I was like, oh, man, you sending me rap beats. I'm not really a rapper. But my brother, my my uh, my bro, uh, Wave, he really liked those beats. But why not Willie sent them to me? So uh, I felt like I had to rap in order for Wave to get those beats because I was trying to get him off the YouTube type beat because he was on that YouTube type beat. You know, saying Wave, <laughs> he was on that. But I had an actual producer send me shit. And I was like, man, I really want him to be able to get these beats. So I'm going to just start rapping so he can get these beats too. And uh, it just went up from there. Honestly, I skipped a lot of steps, but that's pretty much how I got into music. No, nah, no, nah, that's, that's fire. Um, I do. I have, a, I have a few questions. So it makes so much sense that you're also a producer and just your background there starting in the church, you know, starting with piano and having that. But I love how you talked about, like, you know, you really, like, fell in love with music through your family. What were one of the albums or, like, what were one of your favorite albums that you and your granddad would play? Oh, man. Okay. Uh, anything with Shaka Khan, Rags to Rufus, and, uh, you know what I'm saying, like, the band, like, Shaka Khan, uh, she was a solo artist, but she also had a band that she worked with uh, called Rags to Rufus. And so anything... Or oh, called Rufus, and the album is Rax to Rufus, I believe. Uh, so yeah, anything with Shaka Khan and Rufus, and then um, I love Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, I remember. <laughs> I don't know if this is politically correct, but you know it's whatever. They are white people, but like I remember my 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 granddaddy had this one homie. Like he only had one white homie. <laughs> he only had one white homie, but his white homie would like always bring him like. Uh, will always come over to like hang out with him, you know, and um, he would bring like Pink Floyd and uh, Led Zeppelin and stuff like my granddaddy didn't have records like that. So I remember he left, uh, he left, uh, ah, uh, it's a, it's a pink animals. He left the record for animals. Uh, the one with the uh, pig flying. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, Dang, now y'all got me one. You got me one to look it up. It's the one where the pig is flying and it's over like an industrial complex, but it's by Pink Floyd. I remember hearing that and I was like, yo, what is this though? And then <laughs> and then uh and then we ended up listening to uh Dark Side of the Moon, of course. And I like that a lot too. Um, but yeah, Earth Wind and Fire, Shaka Khan, and Tina Turner. But my granddaddy really didn't like Tina Turner like that. Like Tina Turner was one of them ones that I liked a little bit more than he did, but Tina Turner was really probably now I think about it. Tina Turner was probably like my favorite, um, my favorite person to listen to back then. Yo. So yes, you were a hundred percent right with animals and the pig flying over the industrial complex. And that was a perfect segue. Cause I was going to ask how you went from church in a more soulful style to then be getting into a punk band, uh, in your high school days. I kind of, I, I kind of fell out of a, I fell out of love with rap a little bit in high school. I mean, I still liked it, but um, I, I moved to Atlanta during the Snap era, so it was like a lot. Like it was cool in middle school, but when I got to high school, I kind of was like kind of off that a little bit, and. Um, I got into like Fuel by Ramen and stuff like that. And then out in marching band, my marching band did like, we did rock shows. So like my freshman year in marching band, we did a Led Zeppelin show. My sophomore year in marching band, we did a, I think we did Queen and The Who. Yeah, we did like a Queen, The Who medley. And then my junior year, I quit senior year, but my junior year, we did uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall. So being that I already knew some of this stuff and then we were doing um 
we were doing these kind of album shows, like these rock shows and marching band. And then my school, like for lack of a better phrase, like the school I went to, like in the county I was in was kind of known as like a drug school. So like kids were like tripping balls, <laughs> like in the bathroom and shit. So everybody was kind of more into psychedelic stuff. And so it just was like a hotbed for that. And my friends were starting a punk band and they wanted a girl singer because uh, honestly, that's just how they approached me with it. They were like, oh, we want a girl singer because all the other bands we do shows with all have guy singers and we want to stand out. So I was like, well, I can sing, I guess. Let's do it. You know, and that's how I got into that band. Oh, wow. <laughs> Damn, you touched on so much fire there. Um, have you seen the lineup for the When We Were Young Festival? Yeah, I'm not going, though. I, I'm i not going, but they went crazy with that. I um I caved into the Smokers Club. Wait, what's you know the, what's up? No, no. Uh, the, what's up? The Smokers Club. That's the one with the. Uh, it's like Wiz Khalifa, Lupe Fiasco, uh, Currency, Larry June, Underachievers, ASAP. What? What Black is Black this Zombie. lineup you're saying? Oh my! God. Yeah, it's like crazy. A uh, um um. Oh, they got Cuddy, Schoolboy. Cuddy gonna be there, yeah. Nah, this is what. Hey, yeah, yo. yeah. That's on my birthday, so I'm going. <laughs> oh, nah, this is gas. Nah. <laughs> okay, let me let me let me stay focused. Um, I definitely need to look at this <laughs> this line. They got yo. This is nuts. J Rock, Earl, Danny. Yeah. E. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Okay. Let me um let me re recompose myself because the Smokers <laughs> Festival or Smokers Club yeah we need to go hit that yeah um, that was the, that was one of the, the the we were when we were young one was like oh this is crazy just like the Warp Tour but the Smokers Club one I have not seen a set I have not seen a lineup that almost made me want to cry a little bit <laughs> that's crazy so the best lineup i ever saw was the first day in vegas they did like that was mind-blowing to me and while i love the when we were young lineup when i think about the audience that i would much rather be in smokers club <laughs> is way yeah. closer to how i'd want to be spending my time than when we were young no shade but <laughs> just just reality um yo so what got you into nfts uh Latasha did. Shout out to Zoratopia. I've known Latasha since about uh, me and Latasha had the same producer when I started rapping. That rapper that sent that, that producer that sent me a bunch of beats uh, when I wasn't a rapper, uh, <laughs> Wano Willie. Uh, he was putting me on. Like I would go up to Philly and stay with him. He would put me on to all types of people that he was working with because he was trying to get me to work with other people. And um other than like literally I only rapped with my brothers. Like I I didn't venture out at all. I didn't do features because I just was uncomfortable with that. But um he put me on to Latasha and uh he first we did like first she like she was one of those people that when he put me on to her, I fell in love with her music videos and I was like, oh, she's not going to hit me back. Like, <laughs> like if I send this message, she's not going to hit me back. She's like, she's up there. But um, she actually hit me back. And uh, we just clicked, you know. And this was like 2013, 2012. And um, then she came down to Atlanta for A3C. And she needed someone to, like, film, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff. Like, her doing the shows. And um, I think... You know, I can't speak for her, but I just feel like she was fucking with me because I was down. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I like to match out when because I do freelance work for like film and photography and stuff, and I like to match the artist's energy. So if I see that you're going crazy, I'm gonna match you. I'm gonna go crazy with you. So I was like, I would just stay in Atlanta and like stay downtown closer. So whenever she got up, like we could just go and you know what I'm saying hit the city together and then like we ended up shooting a music video uh for her song uh bm and um what's well, called like black magic but it's also called bm and um and uh so that music video was the first client i had that made me that made me take my work serious and um so i've always had like kind of that respect for her like throughout the years and then randomly and like I want to say the summer or like the spring of 
last year, she hit me up because I was just posting some work I was working on. And then she was like, when are you doing that? When are you when are you getting into NFTs? And I was like, what is that? Like, you know, I was like, get that out of my face. Like, <laughs> what is this? Like, I don't know, because unfortunately, I was uh, I was I heard about NFTs through this guy we all call crypto crazy and the way he the way he explains crypto and stuff like that is a little bit much that's the homie but he just be doing too much with the crypto stuff so usually i just avoid it i never even bought a to i never even bought, bought a coin before cuz i don't know just the energy of crypto was just a little chaotic for me and um latasha made it make sense you know what i'm saying so i went to zoratopia and then um and then it just, it just like clicked to me and I just went crazy ever since. <laughs> wow. Yo, that's wild that you and Latasha have been, you know, collaborators for that long. Shout out to her. What she does for education and onboarding people is literally second to none. And yeah, she explains it in a way that you get it, you understand it, and you want to be a part of it. And I think mm -hmm. that's really important. I got, actually, you know, sticking with that with that theme, she collected your adult swim performance. And I believe that was the first time that I was in a space like chopping it up with you. I didn't really know you then, but I just saw it and I was like, yo, wait, on chain, adult swim, like what was happening there? And I remember watching that performance and like, yo, that shit was funny as hell. And I'm watching it because it's like you had that uh was that a pre-recorded um like robot voice that you added in there like i didn't know what was happening but i didn't know what was happening either <laughs> okay <laughs> i was like yo if you set this up and you're acting right now this shit is tier a like it was fire and then you went from like that robot voice and that like you know good banter into a banger did you produce that first song that came on i see at that point i was co-producing everything like I didn't start like my last album uh, was the first time I because quarantine was whenever I like started really taking like production more seriously and like trying to produce my own shit. But um, at that time, I was like just co-producing with people like I literally just I will, honestly I would post on Facebook and I'd be like, hey, I'm trying to work on some someone who's trying to link up. And I would just pull up on people, which is dangerous now. But like at the time, I didn't think about it like that. And I would just link up with people and uh, and make beats and shit like that. Or they send me something because I know hashtag I didn't do anything to and new ringtone. I didn't do anything to. But um, some of the other songs, I just would like tweak a little bit or be like, oh, try to sample this or da da da. -da. But yeah, at that point, I co-produced everything. And then the robot thing, I had no clue what I was stepping into with this shit at all, actually. Like, when I went to Adult Swim and all that, I didn't know that robot thing. That was all of them. They were typing that as we were going along. <laughs> Yo, that, that's that's a great thing. Because it came out it came out fire. I want to give you hella props because I don't know many people that would be bold enough to perform without their backing track, especially on those verses that you were doing. Like that was some, that was some ill breath control. So like, shout out to you there. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You talked about how that was like a full circle moment. Why was the adult swim performance? Like, why did that mean so much? Uh, because like I didn't have cable growing up. <laughs> I used to go over people's house. Thank you, baby. I, I used to go over people. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack. My, my wife just gave me some coconut water. That shit was funny. <laughs> but, but um, no, I didn't have cable growing up. I used to go over. Uh, I used to go over different people's house to like, uh, so I could catch, so I could watch Adult Swim. Like, um, my wife now, but at, when I was younger, my uh, like my best friend, uh, Jack. She lived in the same neighborhood as me, and I used to just like rush. I would run to the house, do all my do all my things, and then run to run to her house so I could watch 106 and Park, and like beg my mom to sleep over so I could watch uh, Adult Swim or like my 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 cousins that had uh, cable. I would go over to the house and watch Adult Swim or something like that. Like that was like that was like it was it was something different for me because I couldn't watch it every day. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was watching PBS and UPN and shit like that. So, <laughs> so I really, not UPN. 
<laughs> yeah, I was really into I was really into that kind of uh, you know what I'm saying MTV, all those channels that I just couldn't get. It was almost like they had an extra level of elevation for me because I could only watch it like ever so often. Like you know what I mean? And um, I remember uh, I don't know. I just I've always like I'm really really into Adult Swim. Like. <laughs> To this day, to this day, <laughs> I'm really into adult swimming. That I remember the first time we came down because we came down to Atlanta for a family reunion before we moved. And I remember driving past like the Turner station and seeing like Cartoon Network, see like seeing all that. And I'm like, I want to go there. So it was just, it was just crazy because I feel like because I held like all that stuff in such a high regard because I didn't have it. Um, it was almost like I was manifesting, th- manifesting this kind of stuff when I was younger. And didn't even realize it. And it just felt like a full circle type thing. Like, damn, I really summoned this into my life. It's crazy. Yeah, the power of manifestation is real. That's that's dope. I saw you mention that. And like hearing you explain it, I really see like why that meant so much. It was like, oh, not, not that it was like gate cap, but it was something you didn't have access to. So to then grow up and then be a part of that same thing that you were uh, I'm going to use thirsty as a segue into my next thing, especially because you brought up Jack. But something <laughs> that you were thirsty to go and see. Uh, yeah, that's that's really ill. Before I jump into thirsties, um, I, I had a question because it was based off of something you had said uh, with that robot voice, right? So Will Smith's character from Men in Black pulls up on you. He has his memory eraser and he's like, all right, I'm wiping your memory of your favorite films. You can keep your memory of either Star Wars or X-Men. Which one are you keeping? Oh, X Men. Oh, that was quick. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't don't not, even hold not, the candle. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, Star Wars is fire, but it would have to be X Men. X Men, it's got to be X Men. All right, that's it. That's all. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's simple. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Um, so you have a collectible series with your wife. Uh, you you both made it on Tezos, and it's called Thirsties. What was the inspiration behind that? Uh, really, I wanted to figure out a way to teach uh, Jack about NFTs, but make it to where it's fun and like she enjoys herself and and she doesn't because I, you know, I she doesn't make music, you know what I'm saying? Like she doesn't do that kind of stuff, but she draws and I, will, you know. She explains why she is. She illustrates a little bit better. I feel like she's okay with me telling like the backstory, but um, she does it basically for decompression. Whenever we were younger, like early twenties, uh, we both worked really hard. But Jack worked really hard. She was in college. She was like a waitress. She was dealing with like things that young, pretty waitresses deal with in the kitchen. If you worked in a restaurant, you know what I'm talking about. It really neat. You know what I'm saying. So it was just a lot of like she was in like constant stressful environments so like we would draw and stuff and you know get a little lit but we would draw and stuff kind of to decompress and I remember whenever I was first introduced to NFTs obviously like most people you're first introduced to collectibles PFP projects things like that um is what you see more than music especially at that time now I feel like music is a little bit more adapted and everywhere but like when I got into it, it was like a lot more PFP projects. So um, I remember I remember sending one of Jack's drawings into the Zoratopia group chat. And I asked like, oh, you know, my wife used to be a bartender. Um, she draws these cute drinks. She draws other things too, but I was just really into the drinks. And um, I was like, I have an idea. Like we could do something called Thirsties. Da, 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 and everybody thought it was cool. So, um, so yeah, that's a, that's pretty much like, in a in a very boiled down that's pretty much where thirsties came from like i like that she used it to kind of decompress and relax i feel like the idea of like grabbing a drink is like the same thing as like decompressing and relaxing and um we took a break on thirsties because i feel like we're going really really hard and we've been like working with uh we have like a there's a coffee shop in um in Marietta, which is like probably like 40 minutes from us, but there's a coffee shop uh, that's on like Windy Hill out here that wants to do something um, with us. Like they want us to help them design like coffee cups and stuff. And then we have these like patterns we're working on. Um, her stuff reminds me of like Lisa Frank. So we're trying to like 
capture that energy into into this. But um, but yeah, that's in a nutshell. That's Thursdays, and I never worked with my wife on anything ever before. Like usually, I like to keep business and family and all that separate. But <laughs> Jack says some business and pleasure separate. <laughs> I like to keep that kind of stuff separate. But uh, I don't know. She's probably one of my favorite people to work with, aside from my best friend. Like you know, if it's not Jack, it's Grandmaster Wave. Like she's one of my favorite people to work with. Yo, I fucking love that story. Honestly, I you know <laughs> it was funny because in that same space, Jack was in there, uh, and it was like y'all's dynamic was so. And I don't use this in a cliche way, but it was like pure and wholesome. And I had seen your art and, you know, got to experience it from afar. But then it was a small room with only a few of us. And so getting to have that interaction like that, that's that's fire. Um, So as a former bartender, do you both share the same favorite drink? If not, what is each of your favorite drinks? Hey, uh, hey, Jack, what's your favorite drink? Um... Like, like at the bar though, not no lemonade. Oh, like, get them stand <laughs> um, at the bar. You know, I already know what mine is. I like, um, I like, I like tequila sunrise. She likes tequila sunrise. And I also like mojitos. And mojitos. Oh yeah, mojitos are good. Probably, probably mojitos. Yeah, yeah, you get a lot of mojitos. So Jax is mojitos, and I. Usually at every bar I go to, I get a tequila and Sprite because they know what you can fuck that up. That's like, <laughs> like you can't, like you put a tequila in there, you put a Sprite in there. There's like no way you can mess this up. Sometimes I, I like the cool drinks. Like I like mojitos. I like tequilas. I like, uh, uh, I've tried a Moscow Mule before. I think I think the whole idea of it is pretty cool, like the aesthetic of everything. But I don't like whenever I get those fancy drinks. They taste one way here and another way somewhere else. But like tequila and Sprite, you can't fuck that up. Just put half tequila, half Sprite in there. Double shot me down. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And the special drink be kind of expensive, too. No. See the the the, <laughs> the Moscow Mule is actually my my go to, but you're right with that because nine nine times out of ten they can't really fuck up the Moscow Mule either, but that one time it'd be terrible. So I guess you on just rocking with the tequila. It's wild that both of y'all are tequila people though, so that yeah. <laughs> that works out. Um, yo, so I want to touch just on y'all did thirsties on Tezos. And, you know, it's my understanding the biggest draw for Tezos is like the nearly free transaction cost. And that's a huge difference from Ethereum's gas situation. And I know that you had your dot Tez before your dot ETH. So what was that experience like putting a project together on Tezos? Um, I... I like Tezos because, I mean, it would have sound like everybody else is talking about Tezos. I like Tezos because I like the community. Uh, the com- the Tezos community is really cool. I think Tezos is a good place to, uh, to, to learn, you know. I know a lot of people who learn on ETH and lose a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? And if you don't really have the capital like that to be losing bread, I would say learn how you want to put your stuff out on Tezos first. And that is kind of how... So my experience with putting this project on Tezos was cool because it didn't really cost Jack that much. She could kind of learn different things with me. I could kind of show her, you know, different things. I already had like a Tezos community to introduce her to. And now if she wanted to like, you know, um, put bigger pieces or different pieces on ETH, she could because she already is practiced in Tezos. Um, Another reason why I sp- the the low gas fee I can't cap low gas fee is great but the way I look at Tezos is um because I approach all of this kind of like I uh, like this is just an extension of like merch or uh, merchandising for my music my musicianship so yeah <clears throat> so um. I kind of consider Tezos like, okay, so if I were to sell an autograph version of a CD or something like that, or some kind of special edition, da, 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 I put it on ETH, right? But then it's like, if I wanted to sell like a sticker pack or like 
this exclusive this or you know what I'm saying certain things I put it on Tez and like collectibles and like it, it just Tez also feels like collecting stickers and that kind of vibe like just I don't know the community that comes with that is really cool. Um, I'm not saying that Tezos is smaller or, or, you know, or than anything else, but it's just like the community just feels more like chill, like people having fun over there. Sometimes with ETH or even with Solana sometimes, but sometimes with ETH, like it just feels like everything is so serious all the time. And I get why, because you're putting up $300 to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, for your art. But like with Tez, it's like, I don't know. Everyone just feels like they're having fun. And I like that. I don't know if I answered the question. No, you did, for sure. I haven't gotten to explore Tezos the way that I want to. So it was interesting because I felt like, you know, you were advocating for that, just even with your personal branding, with having that dot Tez and kind of rocking that. And I will say most of the people that I've spoken to on it all kind of reiterate that same sentiment. Like, yo, the community there, because it doesn't have to be as serious, because it's not like if you mess up a transaction, you're going to be out 50 to $150 in gas. So I get that. I will say, though, you're killing it on ETH, too. <laughs> like, if we're being real, you sold out of every single music NFT you've dropped on ETH. And I think that, that like, that's no easy feat. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a testament to, to what I was saying earlier, where it was like you get it right away when you look at your approach to it, your style. It's like, yeah, when I was looking back at some of your YouTube videos – the hair, even that, where it's like your hair is so unique to you, but you flip the colors up and it brings like a new energy each time you're seeing that. <laughs> Speaking on the video piece, like you've had success refreshing videos that did not get the attention that they deserved in traditional platforms. You brought them into the blockchain, turned them into NFTs. Husky was a personal favorite of mine. I probably ran that back like five times straight. Remember, I was listening to it on my laptop and I'm like, nah, hold on. Let me go throw on the speaker, fully got it set up and was bumping it. You have a new video dropping on the 22nd of this month. Talk to me about that video. So this is the first video that I'm dropping on the blockchain before uh, everybody else gets to see it. Like all the other videos I put out on the blockchain, like you said, like have been out and like my you know my little jamie cornelia club that's what we calling it now but my little <laughs> they see it you know but uh with uh with autumn view <clears throat> it's the first video i'm putting like on the blockchain first so that's pretty exciting and it's also a fully i don't know how to i don't i didn't know how to like advertise it or whatever but like it's the first fully nft funded project that i'm putting out so like everything that I did in that video was paid for by the NFTs I've sold previously. And, um, it was a pretty cool feeling and, um, it was cool to like, cause my friends usually just pull up for me cause they just fuck with me, honestly, but it was cool to be able to like actually put money in all my friends' pockets and be able to like rent out like the studio we rented out uh, was like a multi-set studio that has like a contract with HBO Max and all that. Like, that's crazy. Like, we never done nothing like that before. So it was like we were in there getting that selfie down. Everybody taking selfies and shit. But like, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was just really cool because we never like I don't know. It's just cool to be able to bring your friends and people who are in your life. Like I pride myself in um, the people that I book for like my video shoots and stuff like that are all people that I know they really want to do artistic stuff, but they just don't have time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'll have like friends that want to be stylists and stuff, but they don't really have like the time to find an artist to make, you know what I'm saying? So or, or like they want to do music stuff. They want to learn how to be on set. They want to learn this kind of stuff, but they don't really know where to start. So I like do that for them. Like I'll like, oh, you can just be in my shoot. And I'll, and I'll try to make it as like professional as I can without it being boring so that they can get some kind of experience. And then I'll share, like, I have like folders. Like I have, if, if anybody needs them, let me know. But I have like folders, um, like templates for like storyboarding, um treatment writing and i let them see like the treatment writing the storyboard and stuff like that so whenever they uh 
want to start doing their own stuff, they can have that to kind of go off of and kind of see like the the pre-production and then the final product. And, you know, so it's almost like we all, all, all of the people that rock with me, like we're all learning all of this stuff together in real time. And, and NFTs are like really able to like help me make it worth their while financially now. Yo, that is a night. Like, <laughs> I'm so glad you came on today. This has been insane because I love that. I love that you were able to sell out on your first pieces, get more attention on there, and then reinvest that back into your craft, back into your artistry, and back into your community and allow these people to see like, yo, cool, we did these first ones. Now look at how I'm progressing. I'm really excited. I was already hyped to see the video, but knowing that it was birthed from your NFT sales is even more exciting. And it's so dope that you were able to put your friends into those positions as well. Uh, shout out to you offering free storyboard and video production resources too. Like that is so needed, you know, and you don't really, like you don't realize what you're missing until somebody else highlights that. Like when we were doing our first video shoots as teenagers, there was no like idea of a storyboard or like picking locations and saying, yeah, let's just try to mimic this other thing that we're seeing over here. So yeah, that's, that's fire. Um, man. I wanna, <laughs> there's so many things I want to ask you. I want to like prioritize something. What else can we expect from you for the rest of the year? Uh, I don't know exactly, but I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> no, hey, look. That's not... <laughs> no, I, um, I have like I have three. I know some things that I want to do. Like I have like two other. Oh, ooh, okay. Here's some. Here's some things. Okay, so I have this idea. I don't really care about sharing my ideas because, you know, <laughs> I'm me, you, you, there's only one, but, <laughs> but, um, yeah, Jamie, I real quick. Oh, I just, that's the point of money trees, right? I, I love the fact that I feel like I'm surrounded by such amazing people and I wanted them to have a place where they could come document, talk their shit and say like, yo, this is what I'm thinking of. I always say like, yo, if the only thing that you have over someone is an idea, it's not really that good. It's like what you're saying, like, yo, it's me. You could try to copy my idea, but you can't copy me. So, yeah, please plant a tree and tell us what this fire idea is. Okay, so I have this idea that I'm working on, trying to figure out, like, I've never done anything with Mirror before. Um, but my friend, like, you know, I have, like, homies uh, that do stuff with Mirror, so I'm trying to figure it out. Um, I might actually, I see baby guava in here. I might have you look at what I got so far because baby guava be, baby guava and rim, they be, they be helping me out with a lot of, a lot of web three stuff, but essentially on, on mirror, I want to, so I dropped all the songs from my album individually on catalog. So then what I want to do is explain the album song by song as like a digital booklet you know what i'm saying like whenever we got like cds and stuff how you could like uh, you could listen to the cd and then you could just read the booklet while you listen to the cd so i'm trying to do like a digital version of that on mirror to where it's like lyric breakdowns and like different you know different like photo grabs from like the photo shoots we did for the individual um pictures that i would have for each song and like then the playlist at the bottom from catalog I'm trying to figure out how I want to do the interludes because I didn't mint the interludes. I think I'm going to just mint them all at once or something. And then um, at the bottom of it, then we could do like a crowdfund or something for my next album because my next album is going to be like my first, like I've done, I've been in, I've been in punk bands. Like I've been in two or three, no two, I would say two. I've been in two punk bands, one in high school and then one like that was a little bit more serious and we did like touring and stuff like that called Howling Star. And, um, but we never got to the recording process. So my next album, I want it to be more like punk rap, pop punk focused. And that is more expensive, but I'm hiring like local, like musicians to like, I, I just want to experience like full, like band recording, even though that is hell to do. If you've been in a band, you know, it's expensive to record drums alone. And, <laughs> and, um, so I'm thinking if I like do that, like do the CD booklet, then use it as like a crowdfund for my next project, which is a, a that I'm writing right now called Art School Dropout. Um, 
then I thought that would be cool. Um, I thought about the idea of doing a deluxe album, but like, I don't know. I'd rather just focus on my next album. And then I'm dropping two more videos for this project uh, since I've refreshed it with block with the uh, with the blockchain because I had two ideas for a video that at, back then I couldn't really afford so the one idea is for this ain't luck I want to shoot I want it to be like a like me and Deshaun are kind of well, me and Wave are like making fun of like televangelists but it's also like kind of poking fun at the idea of a lot of people who are like hyper spiritualists escape the escape religion so they don't like you know i'm saying in in rebellion and then turn into the same people that they're running away from so it's kind of like mocking like the whole step idea like kind of just poking fun of ourselves because i like doing stuff like that you know i'm saying social commentary but making it a little fun and then for ringleader um i i'm talking to this like circus troupe to do some things and like highlighting dance especially and there's this like place in North Carolina, it's near Charlotte that I really want to shoot at. And um, I want to like do something that highlights just dancers, contortionists, like things like that. Cause I feel like we kind of don't see that in videos a lot. Like I just want that to be somewhere where like dance and like just experimental dance, not just like one, two, three, four, you know, type shit. Like, so um, those are the next projects that I have in my mind that I want to do now, you know, how life goes, you know, you might want to do all this kind of stuff and then something happens or uh, budgets aren't really met there, but those are the ideas that I have for this year and uh, next year. Cause I'm probably not going to drop my next album until next year. Well, you know, like we said earlier, that manifestation is real and I'm glad that you were able to share those um, here in this space. Uh, shout out to baby guava who still has probably my favorite Twitter handle I've come across in the last few months. Um, NFTs provide a really unique opportunity for collaboration like you were just speaking on how you know in a sense you'd be able to collab with getting the mirror article right and collaborating on that knowledge to get your music project um, to come to life what would be or who are some of the dream collabs you have for web3 not related to only music like you were just mentioning dance or like you know any anything in the spectrum like who are some of the people you would like to have involved in this project Oh, in a perfect world, in my mind, if I could just, if, if budget was not a problem, I will fly out so many people, but <laughs> I would just be like, come on down. But uh, I know in Web3, for especially if we're talking about specifically the dance idea I have, I was, I really wanted to like hire, or, and, and this could still happen, but I really wanted to hire like crooks. And then there's this, uh, this um, lady that, I do a lot of editing for it out here. Uh, her name's Sarah. She runs a um, circus troupe. Excuse me. So I thought it'd be cool if like I did some kind of collab, like where they came up with the choreography together or, you know, something like that. I thought that would be cool in my mind. And then um, for just in general, I have a collab actually come, come we're working on with Rim, Baby Guava and Day. It's a super dope song that I want to do like some kind of like web three video for think that would be cool uh there's so many people that are so cool here i really want to work with everybody because <laughs> i would just go down the list with on my friends list you know what i'm saying like i just want to work with everybody because it is so crazy because like uh, i was just talking to sassy black the other day and then she was like oh yeah i'm sure people are banging on your door and i was like they're really not like no like please come work with me. I'm so, I'm super down. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like, I, I rap on whatever I get on, whatever I, I'm down to do whatever. And then I'm a visual artist too. So I'm down to work with graphic designers too on some visual shit. You know what I'm saying? Or like some editing stuff. I want to do something with Rome, uh, Rome fortune. Cause I like his rap style and I like the way he sees visuals. And then I like, uh, I like the way stone sees colors. I think that's really cool. Um, I've, I'm going to end up just complimenting everybody. I want to work with everybody. <laughs> Yo, no, that's, that's fire. Um, I know that was kind of a loaded question. Like there are so many talented people in the space with like great intentions and even greater ability. Uh, shout out to Stone Spectrum. Just amazing, amazing use of colors. When I think about, you know, you're in Atlanta too, which is dope because it becomes one of those hubs 
where it's wild because NFT NYC or like NFT LA, it's pretty cool because everyone gets together, but there's so many events happening. There isn't really like space or time to create. And that's something I've been trying to think of like, yo, do we need to have separate sessions? Because everyone will come to New York or LA or like Denver for ETH Denver. But because of the like technical events, there isn't really a lot. There's more networking than there is collaboration. Mm -hmm. So I've been playing around with what that looks like, where it's like, yo, we should just have kind of like designated weeks in different cities where people are popping out and saying like, oh, you know, I've got this studio or I've got, you know, this thing set up over here and try to foster more of that. Um, yeah, just a just an idea. So, Jamie, this has been like a really, really, really incredible conversation. You've dropped a lot of gems. Uh, I want to thank you again for coming on and just sharing your story, sharing what inspires you. Had some good laughs. Uh, <laughs> you know, actually, this is again off topic. I, I tend to do these tangents. Please just stay with me. Uh, I saw you uh, retweeting Euphoria memes and. Spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen season two, like episode four or whatever yet. Skip ahead. Uh, that shit was. Are you like an avid Euphoria watcher, or were you just showing oh, me? Memes? I'm very, I'm very much so. Like Euphoria Day is important to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love TV. <laughs> like it's crazy because like I didn't have cable growing up, so now I have every single. Su- I have every single subscription you could possibly have. It's really a problem. I get them all. <laughs> I, okay. I just uh, okay. oh, I just got started watching. Uh, y'all should watch uh, G- the Righteous Gemstones. That shit is funny, especially the if Righteous you was Gemstones is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just got into that. McBride is McBride is comedy, and that was gone for a minute. I thought they weren't coming back, but they just brought back season two. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just gonna ask Re Euphoria. Who's your favorite character on the show? Uh, depends on what mood I'm in because I feel Maddie. Like sometimes she'd be saying stuff like I feel you, but character it's like favorite character versus character I relate to. Like Matt, I like the way Maddie is written. I relate to like I have home. Like she just reminds me of a lot of people that I know in my life. But um, my I think my the character I like. I feel on a spiritual level is probably Lexi. Like Lexi's Lexi's reaction to everything that goes on is just like me. That's me in the back watching, watching the shit show. <laughs> so yeah. Right, I fuck writing it. about it. <laughs> yeah. Into art. Yeah. Let me just make this into a song. Like I, especially whenever they did this episode, I am sorry if, to anybody and everybody who hasn't seen it, but especially when they did the episode where they like kind of showed how she viewed life, like as a director, like I really felt that it's like, that's exactly, I just be, I'm real observant. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, I, I try not to comment on certain things, even though, even how we were talking earlier about all the stuff that was going on in space. I really try not to comment on certain things. So I till I really see what's going on because like, you know, some people, I, what, what, what do they say? Um, you Are you with the years. fools and you won't be able to tell who's from afar or who is who from afar? Well, that, that too. Well, uh, that too, but I'll say you got you got two ears and one mouth for a reason. You know what I'm saying? You got two oh, ears, yeah. two eyes. Yeah. You got e- two ears, two eyes, and one mouth. Like you're supposed to peep the scene, listen, see what see what motherfuckers is talking about first before you just start speaking, you know. <laughs> so I fuck with Lexi. <laughs> yeah, that was just I, I saw that meme and you had me cracking up with that. So <laughs> fucking <laughs> Ruth throwing bombs and just letting it fly. Okay, uh, back on track. Uh, before I let you get out of here, I ask every guest two questions. Um, as we all know, seed phrase is a term that applies to your 12 or 24 uh, word account recovery key. I keep telling people that seed phrase is not scary enough because when I first heard seed phrase, I didn't. it didn't really settle in with me that if I lose this, then I will lose access to my NFTs, to all of my cryptocurrency. Like it's something that I have to protect with, not with your life clearly, but you know, it's. Can y'all hear me still? Hopefully, maybe. Yeah, okay, I hear cool, you. cool, cool. Um, so, damn, do not disturb is failing me. <laughs> um, so, back on track, seed phrase. So, I wanted to 
continue with the idea of like repurposing the seed phrase. And we're here on money trees. We're planting seeds. We're planting trees. And so I ask everyone, what is their seed phrase in relation to what is a quote saying lyric motto that you live by that embodies your approach to the art? So Jamie Cornelia, what is your seed phrase? Uh, what's meant for me won't miss me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. Yeah. That's- yeah, that's, yeah. So what what's meant for me won't miss me. That's kind of how I approach everything in life. So I, I don't I don't get di- disappointed when I don't get something. Or if something don't work out, I'm like, oh, you know, this wasn't meant for me. That is real as hell. The second question I ask is we are going to be listing the one of one. Jamie, number 26, Money Trees Note, to celebrate your appearance here today as an NFT, what is the listing price going to be? Oh, wow. Uh, What's it going on? What you meant it? So I meant it on my own contract. And what happens is um, it was a way, one, for me to celebrate it. One, you know, I have my artist, Fernando, who we work with, I've been working with for years, came up with this idea. And I was like, man, it would be really cool to kind of add this layer into the talk show where after each episode, instead of having custom art, you know, I give I create an art piece that lives on the blockchain and cements this moment that we had. It's also a way. So 50 percent of the profits go to you and then me and Fernando split the rest, but also to keep it kind of fair and I allow the guests to price it however they want. I pay Fernando up front so that way his work is compensated for. And then this just Mm. becomes, you know, something that lives. And when you become the star that you will be and people don't have any NFTs to come collect and they hear you talking about the album (laughs) and talking about the work that you'd be doing, they're like, shit, like, you know, this moment, I want to be a part of it through this. The Money Trees Notes represents that. So let's do a... Now, don't get me if it's too low, but I'm thinking like it's if it's 26, why don't you do 0.26? There it is. Ain't no such thing as too low. No too low, no too high. I think it's uh, – to me, the, the sales are secondary, right? I love – I genuinely love the art. Like I'm really excited to see what it will look hey, like. Hey, that's what's up. Like 100 episodes in and being able to reflect on these conversations that I've had. Uh, I feel like everyone has really dope, unique styles, and it's it's a it's a really fun thing for me. It's a really fun element of this. Um, like I haven't really been pushing the sales side of it. Uh, maybe I need to more. That's a conversation for another day. But point two six is great. Twenty sixth episode. There we are. We will be seeing you in what fourteen days, right? If I can do math, yes. For your drop maybe on two 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 two. two. Right, six twos. Yep. Maybe I can count. <laughs> all the twos. All the twos. All the twos. Yo, again, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on. This has been really, really fun. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And oh, you too, fam. Hell yeah, hell yeah. We'll talk later. And and thank y'all for coming too. Y'all are y'all are fire. This is cool. All right. <laughs>